In 1959, Crawford Greenwald authored a book titled The Uncommon Man, in which he wrote, The story of America is the story of common men who were inspired to uncommon levels of accomplishment. My father was indeed an uncommon man. He had so many interests and so many abilities, and he used them all. He was never afraid of telling the truth about anything. He immediately saw the essence of a problem. He got that very quickly. Everybody that ever worked for him thought he was God. Greenwald grew up in a family that valued creativity, learning, and exploration. All became hallmarks of his life personally and professionally. Inventiveness was not only Crawford Greenwald's destiny, it was his heritage. Homan Halleck was my father's great-grandfather, and he was a member of the American Missionary Board in Istanbul. He was a printer, and he was charged with finding a way to create Arabic type. He did figure out a way of doing that. It's a kind of pentagram, which continued to be used for many years thereafter for printing the Arabic script. My father, Crawford Greenwald, was uh, the only child of Dr. Frank Lindsay Greenwald and Mary Halleck Greenwald. Dr. Greenwald was a physician at uh, Girard College in Philadelphia, and my father grew up there most of his young life. Went to a, a German school run by German monks. He says he spoke German before he spoke English. My uh, grandfather used to read uh, German fairy tales, Grimm's fairy tales, to my father in German. I have the book. He said much later that it was the education in that school which enabled him to go to Penn Charter School and to get in at a rather early age, two years younger than the rest of his class. He studied at Penn Charter and then from there went on to MIT. Young Crawford was raised in a world of opportunity and abundance. Among his playmates were the DuPonts, whose favorite pastime was producing elaborate motion pictures, written, directed, and starring themselves. Crawford's outgoing nature and flair for the dramatic were perfectly suited to such productions. One of the DuPonts in particular drew Crawford's attention, young Margareta. He had met my sister at age 12 when they were both spending some time in Atlantic City. Crawford's mother and Irene Dupont's aunt, as luck would have it, were sisters. So Crawford had reason to see Margareta regularly, but he was not alone in his admiration. On Saturday afternoons when work was out, he would come with a group of young men that surrounded my sisters and they would play hare and hounds running off on foot. Two would run away leaving a torn up paper as where they'd been and the hounds would try to find them. They'd probably run five miles in an afternoon doing that. In an impressive demonstration of his determination and strategic prowess, Crawford launched an unrelenting personal campaign to engage the popular Miss DuPont. Crawford, quite early in meeting my sister, decided he wanted to marry her but he had a great deal of competition. So early on, he decided he would get Margreta aside from the group and say, Gret, will you marry me? And Gret would, of course, say, oh, Crawford, don't give me that nonsense. Forget it, go away. And then the next time they met, he would say, Margreta, would you marry me? And she'd say, oh, no. And this went on for the best part of a year. One day he said, Margareta, would you marry me? For the umpteenth time, uh, my father popped the question, and to his astonishment, uh, uh, my mother accepted him. <laughs> 